Um, my name is Matt Stern. Um, I am uh, co-founder, chief operating officer uh, at Mira. We have built the first, the world's first augmented reality headset. It's solely powered by a smartphone and uh, a passive optical assembly. So the goal there is creating an extremely compelling multi-thousand dollar level experience for under a hundred bucks. Um, so while I would love to dive into the history of Mira and uh, AR's next step, which I've defined as something that is hands-free and social, I'd like to to go back a little bit, and I find it important for us to take the step back. Um, at the end of the day, we're at the, the final moments of Augmented World Expo 2018, and I'd like to shed some light on why I personally got involved in augmented reality. Um, I'd like to talk about why, as many of you probably share with me, I believe that augmented reality will be fundamentally transformative in the way that we view our digital world, um, and most importantly, why I think that augmented reality is the fundamentally uh, important next progression in our relationship with the screens of our world. Uh, so here's me, uh, a member of Gen Z, um, born into a world that's been inundated with screens. Uh, laptops, desktops, smartphones, TVs. Um, and here's my friend, my colleague, my brother, my sister, uh, those I interact with on a daily basis. Also in a similar physical world, yet a different one with their own set of screens. Um, so we share these physical moments, human connections uh, that are part of being human. Um, but at the same time, we have this interesting so-called connective environment um, that are, are really disjointed uh, moments within screens. Um, so what that ends up being is that we live two lives together physically and very separated digitally. Um, so if we take a step back, we have things like the TV, the personal computer, uh, smartphones. The idea that the smartphone in my pocket is more advanced than the computer I had uh, seven years ago in high school is a pretty important feat. Um, democratized access to information, the idea that entertainment no longer has to be contained uh, to your physical boundaries, the idea that we can check on our loved ones across the world and make sure that they're safe, those are definitely things to celebrate. Um, but with all that being said, I think it'd be naive to ignore the negatives that have come as byproducts of these screens. Essentially, uh, a world of digital isolation. The idea that these screens have placed us in boxes um, in which they're not maybe being the most humanly beneficial for us uh, in the long run. Uh, so essentially, that I want to talk about anything that's been labeled social. Uh, a lot of times here at AWE, I've heard people throwing around the idea of social augmented reality, the idea that we live in this world. I mean. Uh, dare I bring it up, social media like Facebook, is that really doing so much good for our human persona and our connections in the physical environment? Um, sitting on your couch, playing a video game with a few of your friends or your family, um, sure, that is a way to get a competitive edge or a collaborative moment uh, with you and your, your, your peers, but at the same time, is the barrier of a screen that is between you and another individual really the best way to figure out that collaborative or competitive edge? Um, if we think about the most social experience that some might describe, playing a, a MMO, a, a massively multiplayer game online with 10,000 individuals across the globe, sure, you're having some sort of social connection, but really is that the best way to work on, on yourself as a human and yourself uh, in an environment? So over and over again, we find ourselves running into this interesting construct that is essentially a screen, a barrier between you and another individual. Um, I believe that AR can be hugely, hugely transformative to essentially eliminate this, this, this byproduct of what has become a world with screens of isolation um, with rather what happens when we remove that opaque aspect of our environment and replace that with transparent uh, digital overlays. Um, so let's take a step at the end of the day where we are here at Augmented World Reality Expo. Let's start talking about AR. Let's take a step uh, into the kitchen environment, some a place that we spend many hours a day or a week uh, in within our respective homes. Um, how do we bring technology into this world to make our humans that much better? Um, some may say let's enable things like utilizing IoT devices like the oven to make sure your chicken doesn't burn before you get home from work, sure. Um, but what I'm really focused on is what is our interface layer? Um, I'm sure there's many designers in this room. What does the interface layer look like? Um, some may believe that it looks something like this, which is a smartphone. Um, we've seen a lot of talk about this all throughout AWE, which is this smartphone-based AR. Um, and I think that definitely has some power. It's the idea of being able to visualize the, stat the statistics, the data that's coming from the, the connected devices within your home. But is this really a great interface mechanism to interface with our digital and physical worlds? I would argue no. I would say that there is something crucial here, which we're staring at right now, which is the fact that the smartphone that we all have is the most connected and most powerful device that any of us have ever owned or touched. Um, and for that reason, I believe that smartphones are crucial to the ultimate mass adoption of augmented reality. 
That being said, I think that the way that people are, are treating smartphone-based AR right now is a little bit limiting. Are we really gonna walk around our world seeing the entire beautiful natural environment through a five and a half inch window in our hands? Are we really gonna spend time training our muscles so that after four minutes of holding your phone out in front of you, it's, it, it's a comfortable experience to experience your world through a new window? I would challenge that. I would say that, sure, there's incredible power that can be accessed, but why don't we think about looking through a lens? Why don't we think about these more advanced devices that don't need to be crazy costly, but still give us the incredible benefits of being able to visualize the technology in the world around us without removing us through a barriered screen? Um, so essentially, going back to all this, I agree that smartphones are important in this mass adoption, but going back to the boxes that we saw a bit earlier, I think it's important to once again not think of the same way that everyone else is thinking, which is how do we enable the camera to be smarter, and rather think about how can we leverage technology like smartphones to make our world that much greater. Um, and so essentially what we've done is trying to figure out the best way to remove the opaque constraints of the screen in your pocket and understand how we can use that same technology, the incredible power that's been built into the smartphone, to produce an experience. Um, so this is the Mirror Prism. This is a device that some of you might be familiar with, others might not. Um, this was the first smartphone augmented reality headset that we released about a year and a half ago and shipped our first few thousand kits over the past 12 months. Um, and the beauty here was that we can create an experience comparable with that of a Microsoft HoloLens, an ODG, a Daiquiri smart helmet. Um, but rather than charging thousands of dollars up front to allow people to begin exploring and experimenting, what would happen if we lowered that price sub $100? Um, so here, we, we launched this product last year, which was a $99 developer kit with a Unity-based SDK. Um, we had incredible people all around the globe building things from uh, multiplayer games that enabled users in different countries to be able to play shooters with virtual representations of each other. Um, we had uh, surgeons in the operating room using this for data visualization to make more informed decisions as they're uh, picking their tool sets. We had uh, designers using this for uh, 3D visualization of their CAD software. And now, as we move from a company that's solely supporting developers to understanding really what the first market is to hit, it's really important for us to identify where is augmented reality today on the spectrum, this evolution of moving away from a windowed world of screens uh, to a world in which people use augmented reality to truly benefit and, and advance their human life. And for that reason, we have just chosen that that first market that will approach uh, wait for it, it might not be the most surprising thing after spending a few days at AWE, is the enterprise space. And what we've decided is it's not that there's not, mar there's not that there's not money to make, there's not that there's not value to be created in the consumer market, but from an education perspective, we are very fortunate to be here standing at AWE and, and spending days looking at the latest and greatest from a tech set. But from an education perspective, it's oftentimes hard for consumers to understand this value. And that's something that will just take years of education from the large companies in the space, spending time showing applications, showing uh, use cases on how all this can, can really benefit someone's life. But today, many Fortune 500 companies, as many of you know in this audience, have spent years educating themselves on the power of the technology. The idea of remote assistance, the idea of being able to have overlays, 2D, 3D, to enable people to do uh, their job in a more efficient manner, reduce error rate. The idea that we can actually enable people to, to be superhumans, to do this rapid knowledge transfer um, without the need uh, of significant barriers like looking through our world through a screen. So this is a little screenshot uh, of one of the applications we're currently deploying in enterprise right now. This is a remote expert application. Um, we did not invent this idea. Uh, we were not the first to come to market with it. But we identified what was the true problem here? Why is this not being used? Why is this still being only used in most companies in the, the one to two unit range? Why is this still in the proof of concept? And we identified that there are reasons such as price point. Of course, many companies don't have the multi-thousand dollar budget to begin designing or implementing these solutions. And more importantly, we found out actually that there's a whole security issue when it comes to bringing in new devices to these companies. Um, so, because we're a smartphone-based approach, which is a device that has become commonplace in almost every company uh, to date, um, we, we have a solution that allows people to begin exploring much quicker um, and, and getting this up and running from a one unit to a 10,000 unit without them having to pay up front for hardware or have to deal with all the security that's necessary um, to get this up and running. So, this is one small example, one very early example of how we can enable people with technology that's hands-free, not limiting, not taking two of our most valuable tools, our left and right hands from us, but enabling a visualization and a rapid knowledge transfer of an expert in, in, in a, a call center somewhere in the middle of America or anywhere in the world, enabling real-time knowledge transfer across boundaries. 
Um, so today, we are uh, out here sh giving, away, giving demos of the solution. We're currently on the floor if anyone has questions about this. But more importantly, I'm tapping on de uh, designers, developers, interesting people in this audience to understand us exactly where, where do we think this technology is going to go. Um, if there's one thing I'd essentially like to leave you guys with, because I know there's so many brilliant minds in this room, it's, it's when we design, let's work towards a world, uh, a future in which our children, those that, that we leave behind, can, can have a world in which they maintain engagement in the physical environment as they're interfacing with their digital. Um, if you imagine every situation in which you've gained uh, utility, guidance, entertainment, information, a so-called social moment from your technology in Windows today, Imagine the true beneficial furthering of the physical world when we can live, allow that world to live in digital harmony with that of the physical. Thank you. Um, I think I have a few more minutes, so if anyone has questions, I'm more than happy to take them. Yeah, we have seven more minutes. Cool. Anyone have any questions? Anyone Are we quiet? at all? No. Okay. All right. Cool. Oh, wait, Thank you. Oh, no, oh, 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 one <laughs> question. Oh, okay. Cool. There we go. We have a, a we have Please. A, if we're talking the educational side and we're looking to implement this stuff into our courses, uh, we have a network academy that does Cisco, and you did an example here. Cost factor, what is the, I, I didn't catch that cost factor for those, and um, a little bit of detail how you would actually implement this because I think educational institutions would be extremely excited about this. Totally, and yeah, and, w and w part of the reason we took this entire approach is, is the idea that we can enable areas like education that don't often don't have the multi-thousand dollar devices. We often joke that uh, for the same price you can get a teacher, a HoloLens, or, or another device, we can outfit all 35 students in the class with devices. So. Um, the, way, the way we currently work, I'm happy to speak to you after as well, is we, uh, it's $99 for the, the headset and the developer kit, and currently we, we, from an enterprise landscape where we're doing remote expert, um, we, we waive all costs in terms of the hardware, so there's no capital expenditure for a company to book. Um, it's free from a hardware perspective, and we charge a $100 monthly license for the remote expert feature, but um, we'd love to, love to speak to you. Thank you.